Ah, great. I just finished writing all the client code for my Android app and I'm ready to write my server-side logic. Let's see, Cloud Functions, TypeScript, JavaScript, and Python? Where's my Kotlin? Maybe I can help. Do you love using Firebase but want to feel more comfortable using your own preferred coding language to develop your server-side logic? And what about React Native events that occur in Firestore or at the server-side events? That is where cloud events can help. We recently introduced second-generation cloud functions in Firebase, so as your data changes in Firestore, you can deploy your own function to react to those changes. Second-generation cloud functions are built off of the cloud events spec and implemented in Google Cloud under our implementation called EventArc. These are events that can be emitted in Google Cloud, and you can listen and react to them as necessary. Out of the box, Cloud Functions for Firebase supports JavaScript, TypeScript, and more recently, Python. But wouldn't you prefer to write your code in Kotlin? Best language ever! In this video, we're going to cover step-by-step -step how to write, deploy, and test a Google Cloud function in Kotlin that's triggered by an event in Cloud Firestore. To do so, we are going to build a yelling robot together. As data is changed in our Firestore database, we are going to convert all the characters to uppercase to simulate the Firestore instance yelling. This is a simple use case that will allow us to see changes immediately and prove out that our functions are working correctly. Although we are writing Kotlin today, you could realistically write in any language that is supported by the Firebase Admin SDK. The Admin SDK allows you to access Firebase from your backend code without the need for an authorized user. This gives the server-side code higher privilege to underlying services and is authenticated with a service account. There may be third-party libraries that exist outside of our admin SDKs and support writing to Firestore, but that is beyond the scope of this video. If you want to code along with us, the source code is available in the repository listed in the description below. Let's start by setting up our Firebase project in the console. First, go to console.firebase.google.com. After signing in with a Google account, click Start a New Project and give it a name. The next screen will give you the option to enable Google Analytics for your Firebase project. This is optional, but it's recommended because it enables useful features like the ones you see listed here. If you do decide to enable analytics, you need to select a Google Analytics account and finally click on the Create Project button. Once the project is configured, you can open the Firestore dashboard. Since you're going to be reacting to changes that occur in the database, let's create a Firestore database. Here, you can select to start in production mode. Don't forget to create strong security rules to make sure the data in your database can only be created, read, updated, and deleted by people who have the right to perform these actions. To keep your data safe and secure, you should write security rules. This is outside the scope of this video, but to learn more, check out the video linked in the description below. Lastly, choose a location for your database and click Finish to create it. The next step is to set up cloud functions. To do so, you'll need to update your billing plan from Spark to Blaze. Cloud functions require you to add your billing information, but you will only be charged if you exceed the quota for this product. If you want to get an estimate for your monthly costs on the Blaze plan, you can simulate this using the Blaze plan calculator. The link is available in the description below. Upgrading your pricing plan is easy. Click on the Upgrade button at the bottom left corner of the Firebase console and follow the steps on screen. Now you need to set up your local environment. The first thing to do is to install the Google Cloud CLI, also known as gCloud. The link to the documentation with the step-by-step -step instructions to install gCloud can be found in the description below. Once you have that installed, you need to authenticate with the same account you used to sign into Firebase. After signing in, you need to select the Firebase project you just created by providing the project's ID. This information is needed in order to deploy the cloud function later. If you want to double check the setup to confirm it's the right project, you can run gcloud config get project. Before writing the function, there are two more things you need to do. Grant some permissions in the Google Cloud Console and enable the Cloud Run API. First, navigate to the Cloud Run API and enable it so you can utilize Cloud Run, which powers our functions. Then, navigate to the Identity and Access Management dashboard. From here, click on the Edit button and add to the default compute account a few permissions. The first permission is the Cloud Run Invoker, and the second one is the Event Arc Event Receiver. Okay, now you're ready to write the Cloud function. 
Start by creating a new Maven project and add a few dependencies to it for Kotlin and these other dependencies for Cloud Function support. When a Cloud event comes in, it will contain some information that the actual event that meets the specification. These are things like the ID of the event, the source, data content type, and format. We have placed one event on the screen for us to jointly take a look at. Looks confusing, right? If we look closer at the event, we can see its type is protobuf. Protobuf is an efficient write format that allows us to decode it using another library that we installed. So in our code, we will call document event data dot parse from and supply our binary protobuf. This will then give us the option to work with the binary data in a usable format. From here, we have access to the previous and current values of the document field and much more. You'll find a link to the protobuf we are using and to the library with compiled cloud events in the description. Once we have that, all we do is search for the desired field we want to change and then check if it's in the desired state. In this example, we're checking if the content is all in uppercase. If it's not, we convert it to the desired state and write it back to the document in Firestore using the admin SDK. We've written the function. Let's deploy it. Navigate to this project's folder and get ready to type a really long command. The command starts with calling the CLI and determining what part of cloud you want to work with and what you want that part of cloud to do. In our case, it's deploy. Then give the function a unique name for subsequent deployments. You can reuse this name to update the function. Next, specify that this is a second generation cloud function by adding gen2 to the command. This is needed so you can receive event arc triggers. Then you need to determine the entry point in the code and the runtime that you have developed this code against. In our case, we developed this against Java 17 and we'll be using the Firebase uppercase text function in the functions package. Next in this command, you need to specify the trigger information, such as where the Firebase trigger is originating from, what type of Firestore events we are interested in, and what is the path pattern we want to observe and the location of the database. In this case, we're interested in the written event specifically for documents stored in the YAL collection. The last variables that you need to set are the project that is running this command and the region where this function will run, as well as the memory size allocation for the function. After adding all this info, you can run the command. You'll probably have to hit yes a few times to allow this function to enable a series of APIs for this to work. For example, cloud build, event arc, and cloud functions. If the deployment was successful, you should be able to see the cloud function in the dashboard in the Firebase console. Oh, there it is. Now the fun part. Let's test this function. Remember, we specified that we want this cloud function to run whenever a document is updated in Cloud Firestore. An easy way to test this is to go to the Firebase console and use the Firestore viewer to create a new document. So here, I create a new collection with the same name I used when I registered the cloud function in the previous step. In this collection, I'll create a new document with a field of type string, make sure that the field name is the same I used in cloud function, and enter a value for this field. Don't forget that the value should be in lowercase so you can see the function in action. In the background, my cloud function now converts the value to uppercase and writes it back to the document. This just takes a short moment, and there it is. The document is updated, and the value of the field is now all uppercase. And if you want to look at the logs, you can do so in the Google Cloud Console. An easy way to find them is through the Firebase Console by navigating to the Cloud Functions dashboard, clicking on the three-dot menu, then on the View Logs option. It will take you straight to the Logs page in the Cloud Console, where you can search for data using a variety of filters. This is a reminder that deploying cloud functions using the gCloud CLI will not provide the same out-of-the-box features that you may get with deploying the Firebase-supported cloud functions. For instance, in our Kotlin cloud function, we need to parse the protocol buffer, lint, and check our own code for deployment, and had to manually set up event arc to communicate with the appropriate function. Whereas when using Firebase to deploy, the Firebase CLI handles these things on your behalf. And that's all we wanted to share with you today. Now you're able to use the same language that you use in Android apps in your cloud functions. And there's much more you can do with cloud functions in many other programming languages. Check out the Google Cloud and Firebase documentation to learn more. If you like this code along, give this video a like and subscribe to the Firebase YouTube channel and feel free to send it to someone who you may think like it too. I'm Alexander Noe. And I'm Rosario, reminding you that Kotlin isn't just for client apps. Yeah.